Our next speaker today is uh, Anna Rikkinen from Ornamoaten Design Finland, the expert organization for designers here in Finland. And Anna will talk about the role of arts and crafts in the built environment. And uh, for instance, questions like, is there a place for handmade and materiality in public space? And what is art in the built environment? And what is craft in contemporary public art? So please welcome and thank you, Anna Rikkinen. Thanks a lot for asking me to talk about this subject. And uh, actually, I recently I uh, led a co-partnered project which dealt with the role and value of art in built environment. And the aim of that project was to increase the demand of creative services offered to construction sector. We offered networking seminars and guides and info packages on good practices. Uh, that was the name, Taide Käyttöön, Art in Use. I'm sorry for our international listeners that all the material is in Finnish, but well, I'm quite proud of the, the whole project. But my presentation today, it will look into questions like, is there really a room for craftsmanship and material-based interpretation in built environment? And could the industrial process actually learn something essential from crafts and artists' way of thinking? And I've collected some, uh, mostly Finnish, some Nordic examples from this for this presentation. Craft relies on traditional knowledge of making where the human hand is preferred over the industrial process. Craft is born from human needs and therefore it will possibly sustain itself into the far future as long as our species survives. This is a statement by Lee Edelcourt. We are now even more than ever faced with the challenge to make life sustain sustainable and sustainability meaning that all life forms are appreciated. Here's a young artist's work, Matilda Palmu. Uh, the names are, are a crucial part of her Chagard Bogan works and they, I think they really well show the mindset, mindset of uh, the hopeful future. Well, let's at first look at the the real estate and construction sector in Finland. The importance of built environment for e ecology, economy and functional society is now better understood. Our living environment has a major impact on people's health, smooth everyday life and general well-being. It's calculated that in Finland construction accounts for 35% of society's resource consumption. Therefore, all activities within the real estate and construction sector should be guided by the United Nations Sustainability Goals. And built environment is a major player in achieving those goals. What happened? Whoop. Yeah. <laughs> Every second year in Finland, the state of the built environment is evaluated. Since 2017, there has been a panel for architecture, planning, design and art. Among the first results of the arts panel in 2017 was this. Expert work in the creative industries can affect all quality aspects of the built environment. And the evaluation in 2019 stated this, alongside the technological goals, all construction must consider the, the ability of skilled design and art to support and maintain a sustainable, high quality and experiential environment. Without beauty and functionality, there is no sustainability. And for this year, 2021, the report actually confirmed. 
our perception of the quality of built environment is changing. It needs to produce quality, quality of life. Factors that support health include recreation and exercise, accessibility, beauty of the environment, com community spirit, and positive experience of the history of the place. Art reinforces all of these. So, art, craft and design are worthy ways of enabling better everyday life for people. In recent years in Finland, art has been incorporated into an increasing number of construction projects and this in turn has led to an increased presence of art in everyday environments. Many Finns can now enjoy art in public spaces such as hospitals, educational institutions and as well as outdoor areas and city centers. The value of the built environment requires many considerations and involves many types of expertise. It is crucial that craft artists know how is among the expertise. I think good sus sustainable surroundings is built joint by joint efforts, efforts and by incorporating the imagination of the artists into the plans. There's actually a lot of possibilities for craft artists to work at all levels in our surroundings. From urban development to product design, from urban spaces to buildings and pub public artworks. Artists should work together with designers, architects, building engineers and other professionals of urban planning throughout the planning process. Here's a school in Denmark, actually. Uh, the artwork is, is uh, by Ingrid Kesseler. Sorry about the pronunciation. She was educated in uh, Den Denmark's design school co in Copenhagen in print and textile installation department. And she created this colorful work for a newly built uh, school in in Sondermarken in Haslev. And the school is, uh, it's actually the first zero en energy building. And the uh, ambitious building, I mean, zero energy building in, in Denmark, the first one. So it was really followed this, that of this uh, plan for this artwork that uh, contributes to the identity of the house, which is play and learning. So what is the dialogue between craft and building industry? Can it happen? Before, craft artists used mainly manual tools. Many craft practices today intersect today with techniques of mass production. And while it may appear that crafts is opposite to mass production, in reality, their mutual relationship is more complex. Here you can see uh, a public art artwork by Kirsi Kivivirta. The everyday stories about cycling are printed on the surface of the bricks. The texts for this public art piece have been collected by interviewing people of different ages. This work was actually made already 2004. And since then, the public art scene in Finland has expanded rapidly. Currently, there are several craft artists working in the field. Another uh, example from Denmark, this living brickwork, uh, it's called, and uh, this um, Karen Lisbeth Rasmussen, who says that the brick is, is, in her opinion, the most beautiful building material we have. It's wonderful to have someone to, you know, that this is my material to state that. Yeah. And an example from Finland. There's actually a thin line between art and architecture sometimes. A wood artist Ilona Rista makes these spatial artworks, which are part of the interiors, and she uses 
automatic milling machine and is very conscious that the result would be as rich as with manual carving. The works serve also as, uh, as acoustic reliefs and uh, at the same time these opening and concealing walls. Um, lately she has actually been uh, also involved in multi-sensory interactive events where she integrates animation and soundscape to her, her reliefs. And one example of her work in, uh, in CERN, where uh, she added this computer technology into the work and the, the task work was actually to include a proton collision as a subject to the work. And she achieved the decay of protons in a particle acceleration with the lead lights and mirrors. I haven't seen it working, but it probably is looking great. I think the contemporary craft sector can offer a novel approach for the construction industry. Craft artists are all the time experimenting with conventional and non-conventional building materials and seeking to explore new possibilities in design. The essence of this exploration involves tectonic thinking and investigating material characteristic. Craft artists have the know-how and knowledge of the material and the ability to apply their artistic visions to use. And the result can be both functional and decorative elements. Craft can also be implemented in industrial methods. Glass artist Renata Yakovlev is exploring ways to rethink and redefine the use of materials and techniques for different applications. She created this form concrete, which is a new patented technique to shape concrete while it's being cast. It's usable for precast element industry, and uh, the technique will give this wonderful opportunity for um, structures and uh, di three dimensional forms on concrete surface. Renata said that the result of uh, that wh why she invented this was the result of her admiration, adm admiration of concrete plastic nature. And the, the uh, elements have been developed in cooperation with um, Finnish concrete production and con consult companies Parma OY and Betonebiidak OY. In the field of construction, skills of creative professionals are needed to increase the human and aesthetic aspect. Methods of art, craft and design help to involve different user groups while promoting collaboration and communication. Social inclusion creates value that supports our society in many ways. This statement of, from, from jewelry artist Hanna Hedman makes me almost cry every time I read it, especially when I see the stuff she, she makes. She makes these wonderful fancies. She had an assignment to design something for the children's outdoor environment and uh, chose to process a part of the um, sad fence that surrounds every nursery for safety reasons. In the fence there are actually uh, uh, images of, of uh, the species that are about to die and she hopes that this will increase conversation about the different species and how we can reduce the loss of biodiversity. 
and she actually made also to go to go with the fence she made this educational uh, material on rest, red listed species for the preschool children and staff Considering how essential playing is to our well-being and how predictable our public space is, this off-ground is about upscaling playing elements where one size fits all. It's a democratic way to offer people alternatives to seating, hanging, floating, swinging and laying. This was uh, actually realized in Copenhagen by uh, artists, uh, designers Gitte Nygaard and Jair Strasnov. In addition to technical life cycle aspects, quality often refers to user experience, which can be improved by, for example, service design. Solution-centered approach and participatory design has been hip and hot for some time now. Participatory design, or also known, known as co-design, invites all stakeholders like customers, employees, partners, citizens and consumers into the design process as a means of better understanding, understanding meeting, and sometimes preempting their needs. Currently, the customer centric culture and human centered design is changing into life centered design and durable consumer culture. Durability is the know how that we cra as craft makers possess. We are looking at a life cycle of mostly 100 years rather than 20. Another recent example from Finland, uh, an altar piece for, for a church in Finland by Kirsti Taiviola. An integ integral part of the altar piece was a participatory design process. The artist asked people to send photos which manifest the significance and sa sacredness of nature. Based on the photos Taiviola designed, the coloring of the glass, glass parts. Another piece from her that is actually really, really recent from a couple of weeks ago, or was it last week? that it, this uh, metro station open, opened and uh, Kirsti has been developing a method of producing glass lenses that enable her to direct light into patterns on different surfaces. And this Genno, Genno work in metro station in Helsinki University is, uh, is the recent example. Her creations are merging lead, lead lights and traditional craftsmanship together. An example of textile. Elina Helenius created this moss wall textile that catches the eye and muffles sound and at an insurance company in Tapiola head office in Espo. And here as well, the concept was created with the interior architect and the architect. And actually, another example from Pasila, an area in Helsinki, which is a sort of a wonderland of concrete. Or at least it uh, is now, now more wondrous after ceramic artist Laura Pehkonen was invited to add her ceramic characters into the area. Inni Pärnänen is a Helsinki-based jewelry artist and designer. She creates three-dimensional structures from very thin plywood. This one is situated in, in um, Aalto University. 
And actually, Aalto University is the first Finnish university to make a commitment to take the percent one percent principle for arc acquisitions, acquisitions in in all of its construction projects from new buildings to renovations. The art coordinate, coordinator Oti Turpeinen uh, will have um, actually quite a say in, in what's happening in Aalto. She creates the com campus art concepts and coordinates the acquisitions and each building in the vast campus area will have its own art concept, which will take into account the building's architecture and intended use. And in addition, there will be art placed around the magnificent outdoors in Otaniemi. Again, some um, Nordic examples, Oslo Opera House, and uh, actually, this this uh, funny-looking surface is um, is made by or designed by textile designers, textile artists Astrid Lövas and Kirsten Wagle. The panels are embossed with concave and con convex dots, and they shimmer in the sunlight and give the facade a fabric-like texture. So the um, Oslo Opera House is actually a, a home for a number of artworks which relate to the building's building and to its surrounding. Another concert, from, concert hall from, uh, from Iceland. Here are some uh, very well-known artists involved. So the best examples of buildings can be both very highly functional objects and uh, high, uh, highly beautiful objects and functional spaces as well. And a small example from Iceland, Teresa Himmer. She was born in Denmark where she studied first architecture and lived in Iceland 2005-2009, where she attended the School of Visual Arts. No, no, sorry. She had attended the School of Visual Arts, Arts in New York, but she um, made these works in Reykjavik, where she, she placed them, she actually sort of places them between art and architecture and dream and reality. So playing with the urban space. And one of my last examples is an awarded Swedish artist um, and designer, actually a grand old old lady in in, in Sweden, Ingeger Roman who's known, among other things, for her glass design and ceramic work. She was commissioned by the public art agency Sweden to design the artistic decor in the House of Sweden in Washington, DC. And she created this uh, piece known as March 6 AM, a multi-part work of art that evokes associations with water and ice, frost work patterns on the glass and black granite. And one of her recent uh, cooperations is actually Liljevak's Konsthall that um, opened its uh, additional building. Was it early this year or last year? Maybe you can you can find that or even visit when the borders open and we can travel once again. I'm looking forward to that. So. At a time when exhibitions, thoughts and works are digitally accessible and visual presentation is dominant, a hunger 
naturally arises for tactile perception, to grasp mentally by grasping physically, a need to go deeper into the techniques of the craft and to, to develop understanding of the materials. This quote is from a catalogue, Nordic Hands, a project and a workshop held in Aarhus, Denmark, 2018, so three years ago. It's by uh, textile artists Sanne Ransby and cer ceramic artist Marika Wada. Since that time, the world has actually changed radically with COVID pandemic, but the need to tactility remains. No, actually, the need to tactility has even increased. I want to end my presentation with uh, Meria Keskinen's work, just because of its beauty and lightness, to give us a little bit lift to go to the future. Meria is also um, has been working in, on in the craft scene for some time, and I think, uh, yeah, well. Well, uh, art explores, it transforms, and it inspires change. Craft is often claimed to be a slow art form, but is slowness a bad thing? In my opinion, humanity is initially slow. We don't as accept change easily, but change is desperately needed right now. We need solutions for the pressing environmental change challenges. And this is why craft is essential to life's survival. Craft helps us to develop quality, durable solutions, and it helps us deal with change. It's important to learn to feel real matter, to be able to understand how we can can build a durable living. Craft carries in itself all key factors of quality. Craft has the ability to start the revol revolution in built environment. I don't doubt that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anna Rikkinen, jewelry artist and contemporary crafts expert at Ornamo. This was a, an excellent uh, presentation with wonderful examples of how important craft is in our environment. Uh, great examples. And there's much more examples. <laughs> I would have wanted to have half a day to show you all the great things. We need to have you talk <laughs> everywhere <laughs> to, to, yeah, to get your message through. Yeah, because there's really new things also coming up but i don't have photos so please send me photos when you make great work in public uh, realm so i'm all the time like give me photos i want to shout out the message of craft everywhere sorry <laughs> questions you're here to talk not me <laughs> and and you our audience so that brings brings us to the next step a q a so if anyone here or in the remote audience have any questions please anna is here to discuss this topic i have a question about this direct Gautern uh project uh, is it still continuing or how has it moved forward since it's finalized isn't it it's uh it ended this year yes. or the sort of the funding ended okay. uh, in april this year but of course we uh we built a quite vast uh, network uh talking with with the construction industry and we will continue to work with that net network and also try to yeah arrange i don't know what kind of uh, mm -hmm. round table discussions or what kind of uh, input we can uh, give them of uh, the the people who work in craft and design field we want to show their their know-how we want to uh, sort of advertise what they do and uh, 
and I think uh, we built quite a good network for that. Mm. And it needs to be deepened, of course. And the, this, uh, the state of the environment report, this ROTI, that has been going on, so it will be coming back in a couple of years. So this was the third time that Ornamo took part in the panel discussions, and we were allowed to name uh, design experts and craft experts to the other panels, because there's six, seven different panels. So, so we were allowed to name uh, our own experts into those panels. And that's a great way of continuing the, the talk with the construction sector, because it evaluates what's happening with art and design in that field. So, so that's, that's something that's going to continue. Fantastic to hear. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, that's great. A good question, Reta Hildren. And uh, anyone else? Now see a chance. Anna is here. Yes, Mia Kallio, my colleague. I know your name. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, I'm just wondering that is it just my feeling that um, uh, artists who make public art are uh, uh, they have, uh, are quite often on the background of craft and design, or are the other uh, areas of visual art artists do as much as public art? I don't have any statistics, and um, there are a lot of uh, painters working with murals, which is very popular at the moment. But if you really want to integrate art into architecture i think you need someone who has a background of uh, design or crafts um, because of the education there's um i i can't quite compare it right now but but the applied art and design education that is actually the base quite at some some way the basic of all the craft artists uh, there's some kind of uh, know-how of the um, interiors and uh, the space and how to to react to that space i think in a different way than uh, than from the visual arts point of view i mean the fine arts point of view uh, and i'm thinking that too that uh, in education of designers you learn to collaborate with different part of, of for instance buildings <laughs> i mean that building in the industry or engineers and mm -hmm. so on yeah and also you, the material materials and materiality is i think it's important factor in the education and i don't know i i at least i had some uh, technical drawing so maybe it helps a bit in my time i don't know how <laughs> if it's there now but but uh, I, I i know a bit how to read the technical drawings so i think that would help i think most of the craft artists have a bit of technical um, uh, background in the education but there was a question oh you, you were uh, i was just saying that and maybe the network of uh uh, cra uh, artists who have the background of craft and design, they have a, a network in industry more than mm, that's other true. visual that's artists. True also, yeah. Yes, please, Gunnar. Uh, an answer to, to me, uh, uh, at least in the history of this in Sweden, it's also important to know that, for example, the Art Council opened up the latest year very much to towards uh, design and craft uh, so more possibilities and um, opened up i think that's good to hear mm. that's very very nice because sometimes it's a bit of a struggle to to work on the field um, as a craft artist or has been so i hope i hope the 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 multidisciplinary work that 
you were also talking about that, that there are no um, uh, media, that the medium is not so important anymore, that it's about what you're making. Yeah, that's an answer to that as yeah. well from the Art Council, I guess. So uh, also that lots of Swedish public art is produced by um, traditional visual artists. Uh, but now there is a big change. I think uh, what I was also trying to say in, in my presentation that the tactility is very important because we are, we are especially now after COVID, we are so lacking touching and feeling. And it's very important part of the urban surrounding or any kind of living surrounding, uh, environment, living environment, this that you fe really feel it. And I think craft artists know how is in that, how, how to make things feel. Yes, very important points, tactility and, and materials, something that you can actually feel and touch and experience on different levels. It's very important in our environment. Uh, and actually, you mentioned uh, uh, materials and education and art in education. If someone uh, has more interest in this, maybe during the break, you can have a word with producer Mia Kallio, who's also worked with the Direct Commit project, the Godfathers and Godmothers of Art. Uh, Konstfadrar, which is basically working with, with children and combining art and language learning. But Mia will know more about this, so you can talk to her. And we, we have a question from Laura. Yeah. Well, it's not a question, it's more a comment and thank you, because um, as an artist, I feel that we really need you specialists and researchers who do these researches and put, put our work, um, uh, who change the language of our work to the language of the building and construction field. It's so huge and they have such a different, um, well, they speak different language than us. We know that the quality and the beautiness and, and um, everything that you talk about, we know it's important, but they don't they don't understand it they don't maybe they don't have some kind of like well they speak different language so we need you specialists to make the research and get the results that say that for people this is very important and it raises the value because we live in a capitalist world money is the thing that speaks and if something makes the building more valuable they are very interested in that mm -hmm. so this is kind of like what we need you to do and you have done it really well so thank you Anna and and um, if uh, just for short like with some sentence could you please tell uh, a little bit of the history of percentage art I know something about it but I don't actually I realize that I don't know when it started and who started it and how is it going now well my historical knowledge on the percentage art, art is not very precise but as a sort of a big picture it actually started uh, before the wars already in finland so at the same time as in sweden but since we were in, in deep, deeply in the wars and after uh, after that uh, building the society it didn't it it was sort of left behind so so there's about 20 to 30 years gap to towards looking at Sweden. So um, I think it was somewhere in the 20s or 30s that yeah, that started the that that was it was started in Finland. But you know, history happens. And uh, and um, well, you all if you look around Helsinki Center and the major buildings like. Eduskuntatalo, the Parliament House, and uh, bigger things. So there are a lot of, in my point, a pompous statues of uh, great men, and <laughs> that's one part of the history. It was probably after the wars that you had to make uh, that kind of stuff. And I think in recent years it has really, you know, expanded and started to be 
very um yeah interesting again and sort of uh really reflecting to the people and not so that it's high on the pedestal anymore and i think this development has been in 10 recent years so it's speeding up really fast of course there's always big public art uh, competitions going on or has been since the 70s 80s uh, but the the result well you can see it and nowadays public art is much more everywhere and it's not just uh, statues and um, well Hanasari is actually one good example that they've invested in public art for a long time as well and probably are still in the future <laughs> but uh, yeah there's uh, the va variation in 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 the work artworks is it's getting great i think and also hospitals involved uh, um, schools uh, daycare centers and subway stations and yeah and also sometimes just very small things now i don't have a, an image of it but there's a very tiny piece of uh, public artwork that is actually it's just a size of this uh, it's a little bird um i don't remember if it's in in Uvascula, but it's next to a, a trash there's a trash thing and then underneath there's a little bird and it's something i think it's something that really makes it relatable to also to all uh how do you call this all elderly and children so it's nice to have something down below and not all like wow that it's some it can be something very small and and special and touching your heart it doesn't have to be monumental or it's a monumental in different way but that's my knowledge of uh, <laughs> sort of uh, the history of public art in Finland. Yes, thank you. I never actually thought that these big statues of old men are part of our kind of like percentage art uh, history because they are so far away. Yeah. But yes, of course, uh, Finnish people have, yeah, they are public art. But yeah, from in my point of view, like in 10 years, this. Um, percentage art has increased very nicely and, yeah. and it has a big effect to yeah. artists living yeah and it's a it's one way of um financing public art this percent one percent principle but there are other ways and they sometimes they might be even more effective but it's about how the community com, communal decision making is working so let's not go into that there are more and better experts about talking about how the communities in in finland uh, i mean kunta is that a community municipality. municipality yeah municipalities work in finland so so the decision making in municipalities that's something that we try to uh influence with our the our taidekäyttöön um project and we offered them uh, this kind of guide how they can actually take art into the decision making that in the in every municipality there would be an art, art public art consult consult group or team that involves uh, also the technical and uh, cultural sector and uh, environmental sector in the from the municipalities, all the all the experts would gather together and share the knowledge of what's happening in in uh, the construction uh, in the municipality in in the years to come, and then they can at least very in very early on propose art uh, works or art events to that uh, to in in what's yeah in that uh, municipality. Sorry. Yes, thank you, Anna. Excellent explanation. So uh, there will be a possibility for us to discuss this 
topics more in this afternoon's panel discussion and question and answer session and discussion. So uh, now I think we all want to thank uh, the public for the good questions and comments, and especially Anna Rikkinen, Bachelor of Design, jewelry artist, contemporary craft expert, <laughs> for your excellent oh. presentation. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. And now we have about 10 minutes to go before uh, our third presentation this morning, uh, which is uh, when uh, Marcia Sakavalkante Schubach, Professor of Philosophy at Södertan University, will be joining us remotely from Stockholm. So if we take about a five minute break, let's be here about 11.40, 11.45 we'll start. So extended five minutes. 